What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we're gonna check out Four Degrees by Tool off the Under Two album. Definitely one of my favorite tracks off of that album. I've covered the intro on this channel a long time ago. It's great to learn those power chords and extended power chords. All right, now just for note, as we jump into the song, I'm not necessarily gonna go through the song form and cover each section every single time. What do I mean by that? I mean the chorus happens multiple times and it's the same riff. I'm not gonna show it to you every single time. I'll just mention that it's the chorus, all right? So as usual, we are in a drop D tuning for this song and let's jump in. Now, the intro riff of the guitar is essentially the chorus of the song, the second half of it, as we'll see later on. Now, it's got a, like a sitar kind of effect on it, very thin, high-pitched kind of sound, but we can still just play the open string power chords regardless. So it has two halves. The first half, first half is going to be down here in the second fret, and you're going to hammer on O to O2, and then play this chord right here. And you're, you're going to see this chord a lot in the song. This is what I mean when I say extended power chord, two, 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 four, five, right? And we're gonna move this chord all over the place. So the intro riff sounds like this. Cool, All right? So again, like I said, we start down here in open position, hit open, hammer on the two. And then after that, you're gonna slide from three back down the two. All right, and you're gonna see that come back, except these two parts are gonna usually gonna be flipped and in a re reverse order, okay? So you do that a couple times and then you're gonna go up to the part where all the chords move around. Seven, five, 10, five, three. Those are the frets or the positions that these chords are gonna be in. Like that, seven, five, 10, five, three. Awesome. Now, what I just played there, seven, five, 10, three, five, three, that is the chorus of the song, all right? So he's gonna do that multiple times through the song, and that is what's going on. So now, one of the things that we know when we play Tool is that it might not be the most tech technically demanding from a guitar standpoint, right? This is not Dream Theater or some super shred, but where the difficulty comes in is all the variations, all the nuances, the dead notes, the palm muting. And the verses in this song are a great example of that, right? There's four or five verses, and every one of them is slightly different from each other in, in a form standpoint, all right? So the first riff we go into is you have this riff. That's the first half of the verse, right? And we're gonna be op open and two again, you know, bringing back in that hammer on from the very beginning. Kind of like that, where you have this O2, dead note, O2. And then you have those. Now I've seen this tabbed out a lot of times and they're 16th notes and they go by really fast. So if you're playing 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two, or 3-3-2-0, three, three, two, you know, no one's gonna yell at you. I prefer going 3-3-2-0. Three, three, oh. I like going down the scale back to the open note. Just sounds good to me and that's what I like to do. Like that, right? And you'll notice there are two dead notes 
It almost has this like, kind of like 16th note vibe going on, right? So that's the riff, and then he's gonna really palm mute it and turn it into single notes. And you'll notice that there are some times when the chords are not muted and then the rest of it's muted. So there are some kind of accent notes. And just listen carefully because there's a ton of really slight variations throughout the whole song. And we're not probably not gonna cover every single one of them because most likely, if you're gonna go play this at a party or with as a cover it, to cover it in a band, you're most likely gonna play it the same way for the most part the entire time, right? So you have the, the power chord kind of version and then you have more of the, the single note, really muted kind of thing, right? And that, I'll show you the difference. <laughs> So you notice that the, on the repeat, we kind of let the three, right? And now we have the single note muted. Right here, you're gonna kind of, again, you just stay on that part and then on that last, on that fourth time, you're gonna slide up to 10. Let that note ring out and you kind of throw in a measure of five there and it hangs for an, for an extra beat. And then you're gonna go right back into the verse and this is kind of what I was talking about with the slight verse variation, right? You're gonna do the first half again, but then the second half is gonna be different. You're gonna add a little pull-offs and some pinch harmonics going on there, right? So you have the... And then it, when it goes into the muted part... You kind of get out of it doing that. 2-0, 3-0, 2 and add some pinch harmonics. Okay? And that's gonna lead you right into a variation of the that we did in the very beginning of the song. So you get out of it with those pull-offs, and then you do half of it strumming the chords, and then you include the pull-offs. kind of get out of it like that, right? So you go through that, the hammer on, including the pull-offs, and then I like to go. We go to three, two, up to seven. And then when you slide up to seven, we are now in the chorus of the song, like I mentioned in the beginning, right? It's the second half of the introduction. It's the same thing, right? You do that three times, and that is your chorus. And then after that, you're gonna do, again, that intro, you're gonna basically reverse the introduction. You're gonna go back to the O2 slidey kind of introduction riff, except this time you'll have full-blown distortion. Like that. Now after that, you're gonna go into another verse and it's gonna basically be the same thing as the second verse that we did, right? Where you have the muted riff and then the pull-off variation, okay? And what I mean by that is you have the You do that again and then you, you have the That aspect, kind of the same thing before. It, it sounds like he plays it a little differently where you're not really focusing on the entire power chord. Where it's more of just the low strings or the that second fret of the A string. Just again, it gives it a slight variation. But it's no different, you're strumming that with those pull-offs. And again, that's gonna lead you right back into the chorus riff, right? right back into that three times, and then you have a little segue riff, um, almost like what they do in Stink Fist, right? Um, and it's gonna be, now, I don't know how Jones plays this, I've never seen them play it live, and I've never watched live videos of them playing it, and I, we know that Jones likes to play power chords on the low string, even high up, right? But when you listen to the recording, there's some things in there that 
don't make it really possible to play. Like I've seen it tabbed out and I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna go eight, I'm sorry, 12, eight, 17, 15. <laughs> Now I can totally see Jones playing that, and maybe he plays that now like this, but when you listen to it, if I play it here, hear that hammer on? Where I play a power chord on the eighth fret of the fifth string in bar eight eight, hammer on on the D string eight to 10 to make the power chord. You hear that in the recording. And that's really not, can't really do it up there comfortably. So I like to play it there. And then repeating it, you hear the same thing on the D chord. So I'm playing the same notes, 12 to eight, but on the fifth string, which would be five to one, and doing the five five, hammering on the seven. And then on the second time, you let, just play the single note, and you let that note hang right there. All right, so that's the way, it's what it sounds like on the recording, and that's kind of like, that's kind not kind of like, that's kind of what I like to do. So after that little segue riff, we're hanging on that note. We're back to the verse riff, chug riff. I'm not gonna go over that again because it's basically the same thing. And then you're gonna introduce, again, here's the variation in the songwriting, right? Instead of doing anything else, you're gonna come back to this. And in the second half of the verse like that. Okay, and that's gonna lead you right back into the chorus three times. So I'm, I'm not gonna go over that, just pay attention to the song form, map it out for yourself. It's a good exercise to do, all right? So again, we go to the chorus, the seven, five, 10, five, three riff. All right, with the big power chords. And then we're gonna go, we're, it's gonna take us to, I guess what you can consider the bridge of the song, all right? You're gonna come down in volume, second fret. Two, let it ring out. Nine, 12, 11, 11, oh. Twice. Third time, you play that second fret three times instead of just letting it ring, okay? Add to sus kind of chord seven seven nine and again and then you have a nice little kind of stab or chunk it's basically the same rhythm as the verse riffs that we've been doing the whole time but you're just subtracting all of the chord hits going on you're just putting those accent stab Then we're gonna move into this riff. It's, it's kind of like a variation. You're gonna go from two and then slide up a half step higher, but an octave higher as well, up to 15. Right, and you're gonna do that, I think eight times, but I think I have in the tab as two measures four times. Same thing, right? Kind of like that. And that's a fun riff, you know, Maynard screaming his face off, which is awesome. And then after that, you're gonna get this really delay heavy kind of riff, variation, I should say, of the single note palm muting. Of that, right? You can hear there's extra notes. He's kind of, I don't know if it's necessarily the delay or he's playing some extra notes and it has delay on it, but I just kind of tabbed it out as this section has delay and there are some slight variations, you know? You 
know, so you can do that O2, O2, O2. And you, can, you don't have to pick it up. You can probably legato that. <laughs> Hope that makes sense and you can put a little variations in there your rhythm some some um 16th notes some dead notes all that kind of stuff all right but that's the general gist of what's going on there and you're going to do that eight times and then you're going to lose the delay and you have a little build up section right <laughs> into the chorus, right? It kind of builds up into the big chorus three times, and then you have a guitar solo, woohoo! And he's playing it over another three passes of the chorus. All right, so he's, you play the big chords three times, and you'll hear on the third time, it almost like, it almost sounds like he steps up on a, on a boost pedal or something like that, we're getting ready to do the solo because the third pass kind of kicks it up a little bit, the EQ gets a little brighter, a little cuts through the mix a little bit. All right, so the solo. We have that, right? That's the first phrase of it. Very pentatonic-y, think box four, kind of E minor-ish. Seven, 10, seven on the, seven, 10 on the A string, seven on the D string. And then come down. And then you kind of slide up 12, 10 on the D string. That's kind of what I like to do. So I'll explain that. After the 12, 10. Then you're gonna jump to the third and second string. Nine, nine, 10, nine on the G string. Jump to nine on the B string. Back down. And here, little triad shape, 10, 10. D string, fifth string. Right, and then the final phrase, G string 9109, D string 109, A string 12, 10, 9, 8, 7. It's kind of your resolution there. And then I like to. Because you have to remember that's the end, you're still playing. You have that five, three, up an octave, right? So you're coming down. So right after the solo, the guitar drops out. It's just the bass and the drums. You have a little break. The, the guitar is going to re-enter with a really aggressive feedback. Good luck with that. And then we have essentially the outro riff, okay? And I like to do dead notes first. Kind of like that. So I do two hits of dead notes. And then two and open. And then two, two, three. And then it's gonna be three, two, three, two, three, two, oh, two, 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 bend. Right? So that's gonna be. That. And then you repeat the first one. And then you repeat the second one. But at the end of it, now you're gonna do into the just like that. Just like that. Right? The whole band kind of does that. And you can kind of hear, instead of just landing on the third fret, it kind of has the octave of it on the D string. A little slight bend, some vibrato, and then he bends it up the whole step and then releases it. You know, you can listen to that on the album and, and hear it, and if you jam on it, end it how you see fit, but 
that's essentially what's going on. And there you go, Four Degrees. One of my, like I said, one of my favorite songs off the Under Two album. Always love that jam, really fun to play. Down in the description below, you can find the links for the tabs, as you saw going across the screen. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.